Well, now about time, we've got a bunch of stuff here to get stuck into it. Obviously, we do things in order of size. Well, these arrived quickly. These are some LED panels. All the same. We also got some self adhesive, just double sided tape. Aluminium back PCB and double sided tape. Well, surely if you stick double sided tape on this, it's going to insulate it and not actually allow it to dissipate heat. Power this up and see what it comes out like. Power cables are connected. Let's turn the supply on. We've got a limited turn off amps, shouldn't really matter. 800 milliamps. That's alright. It's not bad actually. Now, is that going to be good enough for my job? I don't know. Now these are supposed to run across multi voltages, so they're supposed to be running 24 volts as well. So let's just change voltages. That's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, actually 12 is maximum brightness. Yeah, and above that it's not really going anything. Actually 13 might be maximum. Very slight difference there. So I've got these to try and replace some lighting I've got. So not as bright as I wanted them to be. So I don't know how good it's going to be really. The idea was to replace some lighting I've got in the motorhome where I've got these, these used to be fluorescent strip lights, uh, one foot strips I suppose are they? Anyway, I put some LED strip light in there years ago when I first got the bus, took the fluorescents out, put LED strip lights in, but I ran around the outside of the housing and they kind of work okay, but they're nothing you know, like directly pointing down. So I was thinking, well maybe I should get some of these panels, put these in there directly pointing downwards and that might actually be better than using a strip light. I think, so I'm thinking it might be less power draw, might use less current and give it a lighting, which is why I've got a bunch of these. Because I can actually fit two side by side inside the housing like that and that should actually potentially give you better lighting with less current draw because it's more efficient for the actual angle of the lights. I don't know, I'll have to play around with it see if it comes out but uh, that was an idea I had. They seem okay. Ignore the mess in the background here, I'm working on a project right now. I might just tell you about it. This is the Cobra 29 Limited Chrome. The Chrome itself has been around for a while. I've seen Chrome 29s for ages. I've done modifications on that sort of stuff. But this is when I got asked to modify. It turned up. It's like, ah, this isn't the same. This is different. This is an AM FM one. It's got FM on it. And it's got a microcontroller in here. And no mixer circuitry for the transmit side. And microcontrollers up here. And that's what controls it all. So I'm in the process of designing modification for this. I'm getting there. It's not quite finished yet. I'll do a video on that at some point. I have recorded footage. Might need a proper knife for this. I don't think this is going to get in there. Let's try. No. And I showed these recently. These are one millimeter welding rods, 6013 type. As I mentioned in the previous mailbag when I showed them before, I'd used almost all of them. But this time I bought a kilo of them. I should be good now. So welding rods. These are this stick welding, arc welding. We want to call it. Just little welding rods, so just, these are electrodes basically. You clamp that onto the onto the welder handle and then you attach it against the metal and you, you arc and deposits this electrode against the metal surface. If you know what welding is then maybe go and look it up. Arc and weld ish ish. Also you might be hear my 3D printer in the background there. I'm trying to get a project done. There's a way in here somewhere. Oh okay. That's what it is. Should we get in the box? So a security camera. I've shown security cameras lots of times on here. Just the Hikvision one, nothing particularly exciting about it. My hallway camera, the infrared LEDs have gone, and it's not basically a good camera. I mean, I could fix LEDs to put it apart and replace LEDs. I could easily do that. I actually have an infrared LEDs I could actually put in there, but it's not a very good camera. So I decided to just replace it with another one. It's about the same sort of footprint, but it's would be a much better quality one than the one that's up there now. So that's the plan for that, again. The security camera, not too exciting. I think this might be a review item. It is a review item. Dual channel, 50 megahertz oscilloscope multimeter. I've forgotten who brand this is now. Obviously I'll be doing a proper review video on this thing. I've forgotten who sent it to me now. Ah, that's right, Zotec. It's got dual connections up the top there. Nice. Even though it's dual channel, comes with one probe, doesn't matter, I've got loads of probes. Multimeter leads, which full light PVC, standard leads. USB cable and manual. Okay, cool. I will do a review on this thing at some point very soon, so watch out for that. In fact, my mailbag videos have fallen behind a bit because I don't actually have any mail. <laughs> I haven't been buying as much recently, so the mailbags are catching up with the repair stuff. So Anyway, I'll do a review on this. Watch out for that coming out, or maybe it came out last week or the week before. If, if it came out before, I'll tag it. We'll give that a bit of a run through its paces, check its accuracy, check its bandwidth, that sort of stuff. Big box, came via DHL, I think. I'm pretty sure it came through DHL, I'm not so completely sure. Um, Click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. 
I haven't done it for a little while. Right, soap this up. Broken up foam, that's alright as long as it's protected. That's the intention, obviously, to so be packed on something else. Let's try and get this thing out of here without making a huge mess. Okay, so it's got bubble wrap on the top. This is not how you pack something. I specifically say 100 millimeters completely surrounding the unit. So I've got all this packaging on top, protecting the top. Top's really well protected. End, nothing. Bottom, practically nothing. Here's the foot. Let's check the other end. No, there's a little bit there. They should have put the, this bit on the other end to protect the front panel. But the bottom's got basically no protection. Got a little bit of cardboard in there. Yeah, that's it. Just like a layer of cardboard. The only good thing is that it arrived really fast. Let's hope it's not broken. So the seller of this was actually really keen for me to post feedback. He actually messaged me saying, can you please post feedback? Because it had been a few days after I received it. I said, well, not until I unpack it. <laughs> this is why. Still got stuff going everywhere. But you can see it's not exactly great packaging for the bottom. Bottom's like nothing there. Well, almost in there. Starting to see it. Cam cables. At least they turned up. That's good. That's hard to get. No signs of damage on the bottom. A few little scuffs, but that's fine. You get that. Front panel also looks okay, thankfully. Obviously, it's a Keithley. Big panel. Yeah, looks fine. No issue there. So it's a nanovolt meter. So we're doing a video on this thing in the future, testing it out. See if it works. Probably do some refurbishment on it. But it comes with a special connector, which is a bit harder to get. Obviously because of the sensitivity of these things, because it's a nanovolt meter, and it's also got these leads to go with it. Future video in the making. And so is this. This will be interesting. So far, from what I can tell, no one has reverse engineered and designed a channel modification for the Cobra 29. At least not this version, like the AEM-FM one. I can't find any information about anyone having done it. So I think I'm going to be the first person that's done a channel mod on this particular radio. I've already had it working on these other channels. I've had it receiving on these other channels. They're transmitting within the band, but I haven't got my offset set correctly for the transmit side. The transmit side I haven't reverse engineered properly yet. But um, the receive side I've reverse engineered, and that's working. The transmit side I'm still working on. I need to do some more probing around and check frequencies and divider ratios, that sort of stuff. But that will be working. I will get it going. I'm 99% sure this will end up as a multi-band radio. It doesn't have to have one band, because it's programmable for an MCU. You can just tell it, hey, I want three bands, and just find some way of selecting between them. If you found it interesting, other videos down below. Subscribe over there. Bet you want to know about what this radio here. See how I go with that. Patreon support link over there, if you want me to buy bits of test gear like this to do videos about in future. Did you know?